This Sora 2 update may have just changed everything for AI video, because with their new character cameos feature, you can create a Sora account for any character that you want and use them in any AI video with incredible consistency in how they look and how they speak. You can use us in any AI video, seriously any scene you can think of. And the cool part is, we'll always look and sound like ourselves. Same voice, same face, every time. So if you want me to star in your next recipe video, or if you need me at the gym, I can do that too. Or even have us paragliding. Let's go. Or I can promote stuff too, like this new gym that will open in York Street this November 4th. And did I mention you can create these videos for free, at least until Sam says otherwise, right Sam? <laughs> so in this video, I'll teach you how to create character cameos even for photorealistic people, how to get the best quality output from Sora with no watermarks and full HD clarity, and how to automate everything in any end so that even if you need multiple videos of your character, you can do all that in one click. And remember, the videos you see here will continue to improve, so if you want to understand how AI is transforming the way we create and how to make it work for you, watch until the end to pick up this skill that's becoming more important day by day. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams and now founded our AI solutions group and Robo Nuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is, with a wealth of lessons that most people join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. All right, so for context, OpenAI just launched character cameos for Sora 2 last week. And I think it solves a lot of the challenges with AI video today while also pointing to where this whole space is headed. Basically, it lets you upload a character once and Sora will let you place them in infinite scenes just by tagging them with their username. So the plan for this video is that I'll teach you step by step in stages. Where first, I'll teach you how to create your character cameo even for photorealistic people. Then we'll understand how to use it directly within Sora 2, which is entirely free, but it does have the watermark. So the next stage will be to teach you about automation and how to scale it with N8N without the watermark, without needing a VPN, and having a high resolution output. And finally, we'll talk a bit about where this whole technology is headed so that you can take advantage of it as well. So how do we create a character cameo? So first you need to go to Sora.com, which at the time of this recording is available in these countries. So up until they roll out to your region, you might need to use a VPN to access this website. But in the app, if you head to your profile, there is now an option here to create your character. And all you need to do is upload one video of the character that you want to create a cameo for. So for this test, we're creating a character cameo of this cat. And it seems like you only need something like three seconds of footage in order to make this work. And once you upload that, you can give it a username and a display name and also a description of your character as well as a few restrictions if you want on what's not allowed for this specific character. And finally, you can set the access level if you want only yourself to be able to create with this character or if you want everyone to have access. So when that's done, you can now view your characters that you create by clicking on this part in your profile. And here you now have that character, which whenever I create a video in Sora, you can now tag that character and create videos for them the same way you would for other cameos. However, if you try to upload an image of a person that way, it will result to an error, and rightly so because you yourself wouldn't want your image to be uploaded here without your consent, right? So a technique to get cameos for photorealistic people is to first generate them with a Sora app with a prompt like this, where we just describe the character, their voice, which is important because the cameos feature also captures that, a description of their face and clothes if you want to define that as well, and for the scenes, since you want a realistic person, you can just ask for UGC or user-generated content style videos. And once you get a video that you like, you can just click on this ellipsis, click on create a character, and that would allow you to create a cameo of this AI generated character, same as before. So what are the ways by which we can use them directly within the app? Well, the main way is to just tag them in your prompts similar to what we did here, which by the way, you can have multiple cameoed characters within one scene. You can also do a remix of any Sora video that you see. So if you click on this remix button and just tag our character here, you'll get a version of that video with your character in the scene. So that's what we did for this scene and also this scene. And in the Sora app, it's free up to around 30 video generations, which is honestly still a lot because I remember Google's competing model VO3 when that launched, it costed something like $6 for one video. But there are also limitations with this method because right now you do need a VPN to generate those videos if you're outside the regions that they offer Sora in. There's a watermark in the video, so it's hard to use commercially. The process is also manual, so you need to directly type in your prompt every time. And with Sora, you may notice that the videos you generate are usually 
usually low resolution. And so that's why if you want to fully use Sora 2's capabilities, I usually recommend to learn no-code automation tools. Because for example, if you have this system, you could just ask for however many videos that you want, and the workflow will handle the creation of the prompts, which is then passed to Sora 2, and the videos will be automatically loaded to any file storage option of your choice. I would tell you a construction pun, but I'm still working on it. Oh, that's terrible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really good. And you can see there's no watermarks. You can generate in landscape and up to 15 seconds if you want. And most importantly, you have the characters faithfully represented across the scene. And that's all powered by this automation, which we built in N8N. And if you're completely new, N8N is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com. And what's great about N8N is if you have this template, if you're part of the community, you can just download it here, import the template into N8N, and that will build the workflow for you automatically. But if you want to learn how we set it up, don't worry because I'll be going through the logic of how we built it so that you can decide if you want to build it yourself. And if you need a more detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to build this from scratch, you can also watch these previous lessons. But just to go over the structure of this automation, basically with these creative automation workflows, it's best practice to have a section where you arrange all of your inputs or the direction that you give to your AI agent. And here in the middle is where your agent crafts the prompts, which it then passes on to Sora. And once those videos have finished, you have this output section where you can link a file storage option or even auto publish to socials if you needed to. And just to go over it, when you set up this automation, it will give you a unique link for a web form, which is quite simple. The only required fields here is to declare how many clips you want and also to describe the scenes that you need. But if you want your characters in the scene, you have the option here to add their cameo usernames, which by the way, to use them in automations, at the moment, you do need to set their profile to be accessible by everyone. And here you also have the option to upload a reference image. So we're giving the scene this background setting. And finally, you have the option to declare the size or aspect ratio, the duration, and the quality of the video. So the aspect ratio is either vertical or horizontal, and the duration is either 10 seconds or 15 seconds, which are the options that Sora 2 allows at the moment. By default, this automation also uses the base Sora 2 model, which is the cheaper option. But if you want to use Sora 2 Pro for better quality output, you can also just declare it here. But whenever that form is submitted, that also loads all of your inputs to trigger this automation, which if we now open this form in the run we did earlier, you'll find that the inputs we gave to the form have been properly loaded here. And the only remaining step for this input section is to upload any images we gave in the form, which in this case is this one, into a URL online because that is what is required for us to be able to use this image. And so here we just have a node to translate that image into raw data first. So if you open that, what it does is just convert this image into this raw data format, which in the next node we upload online. So if we open this, what we're basically doing is upload this data of the image into this URL, which you can see is offered by this service called key.ai which if you're completely new, key.ai is basically an AI model aggregator. So if you go to their website, you can see there's a lot of models here that we can use in our automations with Sora 2 being one of them. So if you click on that, that will actually allow you to use Sora 2 without needing a VPN and also with an option to remove the watermark, which we'll be using. And here on this page, you can already use Sora 2 directly, but if you want to use it in an automation, you just need to head to this API tab and go through their documentation here, which we've already done and have integrated into this workflow. But at least for this node, what we're simply doing is uploading our file to KAI, which is a service that they also provide, so that we can get this download URL, which if you paste that in your browser, that would contain the file that you uploaded in the form, and that is necessary so that you can pass it to your AI agent and also to the Sora 2 model for it to use. Because here in this section is where our AI agent creates the prompts for us, and the way it does that is through these tools that it is connected to. So it has an open AI model connected to it, which it uses as its brain. You have this Think tool, which is unique to N8N, basically what that does is allow your AI agent to critique or check its output first before providing it to you just to make sure that all of your instructions are adhered to. And finally, we have this structure node, which if we open this and look at its output, you can see that the output here corresponds to the five scenes that we requested. And within each of them, you have the prompt that you'll be passing to Sora. You have the aspect ratio, which is 16 by 9 for horizontal video. You have the image reference, which is the one we uploaded just a while ago. The model will use as well as the duration in seconds. And the reason why this is so cleanly structured is because we declared it here in our structure tool attached to the agent. Because if we open this agent, you'll see we have a user prompt here, which is sort of like the message that you send to ChatGPT, for example, except this time, if you open this, the difference here with N8N is that you can put in these green dynamic values, which you can see is linked to the form node so that it grabs the values that you provided from earlier. And when this automation ran in practice, this message is what it gave us instructions to your AI agent. And once this agent has done its task, it now gave you these five scenes, which it then passes 
to Sora 2 to create the videos, which you can see is done via KAI's integration. And where we have a wait node here just to wait a bit for those generations to finish. And once that is done, we get the videos here in this node. But before uploading it to our file storage option, we just have this switch node in order to account for instances where Sora 2 may have given us an error or if the generations are still running and in progress, then we just wait a bit more for that to finish. But once those videos are completed, we now send them to this output section, which in this case, we're just uploading to box.com because that's quite easy to set up. And they also give like 10 gigabytes free for every storage account. But what we're basically doing is we're just loading the videos so that they're ready to upload to box. So if we open this node, you can see that its output is five items where here you can actually preview them and you can actually watch them in full from within N8N. And then the final step here is just upload them to box to load them in the folder of your choice automatically. And once you set this automation to active, what you can now do if you open this form is find this production URL, which you can bookmark or send to your client. And once this form is filled up, it will generate clips for you on autopilot. So there, that's a quick overview of the logic for this build, which again, if you need a step-by-step -step guide of how we set it up, you can just watch those previous lessons I referred to a while ago. Now, a couple of tips and use cases that you may be interested in. The first is you can actually use Sora to generate videos in languages other than English. So for this example, what I just did is include in the scene description for the character to speak in Tagalog. And this is what we got. Na naman dito sa BGC. Ingat kayo sa paglalakad at huwag kalimutang magdala ng payong. And if you can understand Tagalog, that's actually really good. Now, obviously, this will vary depending on the language that you want. And if I were to guess, it's probably correlated to how many videos online are in your language. Because with Tagalog, there's likely tons of videos that Sora was trained on, which is why it can understand this language really well. Now, the other call out to mention is if you're after UGC videos, I think Sora's character cameos feature has a limitation in that regard. So for example, I gave this product image and ask our character to showcase it in a UGC video. And very clearly, it wasn't able to do that at all. But when I did a test of passing on an image without calling any character cameos, it was actually able to replicate the product with really good accuracy. Hi friends, welcome to my tiny car tour. This is my co-pilot lately, my little golden Labubu. So there seems to be some sort of loss factor when you're generating with a character cameo. But I think as Sora gets improved some more, then those challenges will also be fixed. So if you need UGC videos, basically what you need to do is to just declare how many clips you want, upload the product that you want promoted. And if you don't add a character here, then you'll be able to generate these clips seamlessly. And finally, the third tip I'll show you is how to upscale your videos. Because with Sora 2, you may notice that the videos do sometimes come out low resolution. So from the upscalers we've tried, this seems to do the best work with making the videos much clearer while also maintaining the consistency of the scene. And this tool you can just access in this URL. And to use it, you just need to upload your video here and set your target resolution as well. Now this can actually be automated within N8N as well. But in practice, since this costs money, which for this 15 second video, it costed 44 cents to upscale it to 4K. Usually what I recommend is to just do this as a final step once you have your final clip chosen that you want to upscale. And by the way, if you're curious about the cost, costs at KAI. So far from our research, I think they might have the cheapest cost for all of the models. So with Sora 2, it's only 1.5 cents per second of video generation, which is really cheap compared to the other state-of-the-art models that Google or even Alibaba is offering. So now the remaining question is where this tech is headed and how you can take advantage of it. Because if you look at the broader picture, most likely the release of character cameos is a strategic move by OpenAI. Because if you think about tools when the internet first started, like Google's products, initially they were mainly for consumers but eventually Google launched Workspace, which are the same tools but geared towards enterprise customers. In the same way, OpenAI's Sora is mainly for consumers now. That's why they released an app, but they're most likely thinking about how to offer it for enterprise customers as well. And the release of character cameos does point to that also. Because if you're in the creative field and you have a character for your brand, if OpenAI finds a way to verify ownership IP to use these characters or even create cameos for your brands or products themselves, then that would be a powerful tool so that you can play these characters and products into any scene that you want. So an example use case is the production of ads. When I was working on brands like these before, we used to have these storyboard or concept art that's presented to clients before producing the final material itself, because this costs a lot of money to produce, which is why there is always a stage where you illustrate the concept of the video before heading to final production. Now in the future, especially for agencies who want to stand out, what you can potentially do with these character cameos is instead of presenting a storyboard draft, you can already make a full-on concept 
response of video using AI and these characters which you can place in any scene, which basically will let you stand out more against other creative agencies and will also help significantly when you head into the final production stage. Another good example if you're a smaller design agency is when it comes to cold outreach, you can actually think about how it parallels with pitching website design services. Because with this service, when website design platforms like Framer or Webflow came to be, agencies realized that they can spin up a site quite quickly for any customer that they want to pitch to, include that site preview whenever they pitch to potential clients, which makes them stand out because they already illustrate their capabilities. In the same way, I think with marketing and ads, because of the ease by which we can create adverts with AI, very soon agencies who want to stand out will use AI to generate ad previews for them for free and use that as part of their cold outreach in order to get the attention of their potential clients. But obviously that is still speculation at this point. But if you already learned these skills, then you're pretty well set in taking advantage of that as it continues to develop further. I also wanted to give kudos and a shout out to Himi as well as Savvy from our community, whom I was talking to to exchange those tips and techniques when it comes to character cameos. And in case you want to join the community and get access to the template I featured in this video, plus tons more lessons around AI and automation here in the classroom and where myself as well as our members post paid opportunities here if in case that's something you're after, then check us out just in the link below and see if that's for you. And if you've gotten any value from this video, then consider subscribing if you haven't yet because that just helps us a lot to make more educational content on AI like this. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.